Yeah, good evening. There's no official tracking of these incidents nationwide, but it is estimated around 500 people have died from a police use of a taser in the last decade. An online database and fatal encounters estimates about 13 of those deaths happened right here in North Carolina. Found over the years that tasers are an incredibly effective tool at reducing officer injuries, suspect injuries, and bringing successful conclusions to some of these incidents. But we also know that they can cause death. Cry police were involved in another taser death back in 2013 when a call regarding a naked man turned physically aggressive. In these 12 other incidents taking place across the state, sometimes the death happened because of a person's medical condition or improper use of the weapon. Over the years, these North Carolina incidents have led to a $10 million wrongful death lawsuit, an officer charged with involuntary manslaughter, and a federal court case that changed when the taser can be used. Just because someone is non-compliant with you is not a reason to tase them. They have to be actively resisting the officer's actions. In North Carolina, there aren't any statewide training requirements or policies regarding tasers. Instead, it's left up to each agency. Raleigh's policy states it reviews each use of a taser and officers are only allowed to use the tool when a person is actively resisting, showing aggression, or attempting to harm themselves or others. Hendersonville Police Chief Blair Myhand requires his officers to receive initial and annual training on tasers, but he says there has been a shift to focus on de-escalation training. More emphasis on de-escalation is something Christy Puckett-Williams with ACLU agrees with, especially given that many of these calls involving taser deaths start as nonviolent incidents with unarmed individuals. You don't know when you encounter someone their medical history, so the police have no way of knowing. That's why they should be very cautious about when and how they use these weapons, because they are just that, weapons. Many of the incidents nationwide also appear to stem from someone experiencing mental health challenges. Puckett Williams says the steps that places like Raleigh and Durham have taken to tackle mental health related calls in new ways is one step, but more community engagement is needed. What I'm sad about is that someone had to die in order for us to be able to have these conversations. But what I'm hoping is that this conversation leads us to have a real conversation about what does safety look like and who deserves to be safe. More details around what led to this week's death should be uncovered when RPD releases its five-day report. For the I-Team, Samantha Kumar, ABC 11 Eyewitness News.